So the, the booster is designed to take up to 37 Raptor engines. I'm not sure if we'll go that high, but you can really um, you know, have uh, 31. I think like the minimum number you'd want is uh, you know, maybe around 24. Um, but the, the booster is, is designed to be able to take uh, multiple engines out. So you can actually add or subtract engines as you'd like. You basically just need a lot of force pushing up. Um, over time, I think the pr you probably want around a 7,500 uh, ton force uh, rocket, um, which is about twice the thrust of a Saturn V, a little more than twice the th thrust, um, and, uh, and, and on, on a roughly 5,000 ton uh, lift, lift off, gross lift off mass. Uh, so for roughly one and a half uh, thrust to weight. Um, for a reusable rocket, you actually want a high thrust to weight rather than uh, it with a, an expendable rocket where you want a low thrust to weight. Um, because a any thrust to weight below one is not useful. Like if you, if, you, if you have less thrust than your weight, you don't move. Um, so you actually want a high thrust to weight for a reusable rocket. This is a, a very important um, design optimization change. Um, so, so that's why I think you know, more engines is probably good um, and, and getting up to around 7,500 tons uh, over time uh, and a one and a half to one, one and a half thrust to weight ratio uh, or more. So, and, and we, we think we're probably going to adjust the grid fin design to be kind of like a, more of like a diamond shape. Um, it looks cooler. Uh, and it works better too. And then the, the rear fins are actually just legs. So they're not, um, they're not need, needed for stabilization or guidance. They're, they're essentially uh, there for, for legs. All right, so some of, let's go into some of the development testing. This is a Raptor firing. All right, and then uh, obviously we, we had a Raptor fire on uh, the Starhopper. Uh, yeah. Um, it, and it's, it's, it's kind of hard to see, to appreciate scale, but it's the same diameter as uh, Starship. And obviously it's just right over there. So it, it's kind of hard to tell if it's the size of a trash can or uh, the, you know, how big it is. But it's, it's a, that, it's about the, the body diameter is about 30, nine meters or 30 feet, not including the leg span. <laughs> this gives you a sense of, of size. Um, so the little pixels there, that's a little, little pixels are a human. Um, and then there's the hopper next to it, the Millennium Falcon for comparison. Um, then a Starship, which is what you see before you. And then that's what it look, will look like with the full stack, which is almost two and a half times as tall as this vehicle. This simulation will give you a sense of the, the scale of things.
it slightly reminds me of the scene from Spaceballs. establishing a city to establish a city or on the moon of Mars this is a vital step Mars. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, so uh, a rapidly reusable orbital launcher or rocket is, it says a rapidly reusable rocket is required <laughs> for <laughs> alliteration. Um, for um, Achieve, for, for getting a breakthrough in, in cost of access to space, that you don't throw the rockets away every every flight. But an, another key step is refilling on orbit, so that uh, the Starship can get to orbit with, let's say, 150 tons of, of payload for the Moon or Mars or beyond, um, and then uh, it can get tankered to fill up its propellant tanks, and so that it, it can depart from low Earth orbit with 1,200 tons of propellant. This is a very big thing, so that your, um, y your delta velocity is, is enough to transport 150, literally 150 tons to the surface of the Moon or Mars. Um, with, with full reusability and orbital refilling, um, which is, is essentially, the orbital refilling is actually a simplified version of what SpaceX does in, in, in docking with the space station. So it's, it's actually harder to dock with the space station than it is to do orbital refilling. But in practicing, in docking with the space station, um, SpaceX has, has also learned how to rendezvous and dock in orbit um, in, in a complex environment. So this is one of the other critical pieces of the puzzle um, needed, needed to establish a base on the moon and Mars, a, a city ultimately, um, and yeah, so those, those are the critical ingredients. So we, we think it would be very exciting to have a base on the moon, um, e even if it's just a science base. Um, that you know, we have, for example, we have a base uh, at, at Antarctica. Many many countries have bases in Antarctica for science research, and this would be an incredible area of research. Um, so whether or not people want to live on the moon, there's definitely a lot of science to be done. Um, and uh, I think this is, it's close as well. Um, so that's, that would be quite exciting to do. 
And then, of course, uh, we can go other to other places in the solar system, like Saturn. Uh, and other, but the, the critical thing that we need to focus on, I think, is the fastest path to a self-sustaining city on Mars. This is the, this is the fundamental thing. As, as far as we know, as far as we know, we are the only consciousness or the only life that's out there. There might be other life, but we've seen no signs of it. You know, people often ask me, if you, what, do you, what do you know about the aliens and that? You know, I'm like, man, I tell you, but I'm pretty sure I'd know, you know, if there were aliens. I have not seen any sign of aliens. Um, and uh, so like, well, is the military hiding aliens in Area 51 or something, you know? Um, that's a popular meme. 